We can start. Okay, this is a little bit slow, <laughs> if you can see. But uh, basically, you have some notion about what is technology transfer, some idea about what means technology transfer. I think that technology transfer it is the converse, it's like conversion of idea into a product. So it's like how to convert your ideas, innovation into a final product. Okay, it's part, definitely is part of that technology transfer. But we are going to see this, imagine, picture this in your head like an engine, okay? You have an idea that is going to be the input to your engine. And inside the engine, you will, you will transform this idea into a product, but the result or the output has to be a product, a service, that is going to uh, in be integrated into the business, the industry. Okay. And now, last lecture we, we were seeing some people, uh, they're afraid to fail in this process of innovation. So I'm going to tell you an, an interesting, uh, how, can I, how can I call it, experience for one of my colleagues. Uh, several of my colleagues. They were always looking for innovation, but they were afraid to fail. Okay? One of them, the first of them you can see there, in the, he was always <coughs> looking at the steps because he was afraid to fail. When you're afraid to fail, you are very uh, Try to look everything on detail and never look up in the future. So can you imagine that this uh, one of my friends, he was walking to this path of uh, innovation. You're going from uh, point A to point B. How far do you think that he went searching for innovation? He was always looking down to the detail, always because afraid of fail. Do you think that he <coughs> went that far in innovation? now my second colleague saw the first one and said, I'm not going to make the same mistake. But I'm also afraid to fail. So he did completely the opposite of the first one. He was always looking up to the future, and he didn't went through the details of the process. Okay? So obviously, the second one got further, but didn't reach the point B. 
Okay. Մեորը մագալիթի արիս ադամյանի սույնց իրոլ ադամյանիս մագալիթի արիս սատո դարում ու իրդավոտա դետալապս շորս մաղը իղ ուրաբոտա իղ ադամդա մոմաղոշի ու իս ուպրով շորս ավիտա ավիտ իրոլ ադամյանդա իրոլ կամուս from point A to point B in innovation. What he did, one eye in the future, one eye in the details. Now, do you think that he reached point B in innovation or not? <laughs> Well, <laughs> probably, yeah. so now you can see, he was one eye in the future, one eye on the detail, but he cannot manage everything, exactly, so, what happened? None of them, they reach point B in innovation. Why? Because they are working alone. Right now, the key to success is networking. Share your ideas. Work in a team. One of you can look into, and can look into details Another one can see the future, and the other one can manage what is going on in, in, in the process. Uh, now, I'm going to ask you, this is a tricky question, and I'm always asking this to young people that try to be entrepreneurs, okay? I know that it's written as, uh, not, as a, not, not as a question, but as affirmation. But because of that, I mean, that is the tricky part. My question is, money is a creativity motivator, yes or not? <laughs> You're motivating, I mean, Police for the money. Part of The idea is that maybe it could be a stimulator to push something forward, but not the motivation. Okay. For example, that was Facebook. Of course. He had an idea, but he didn't have money. Exactly. So, you do, you are not looking for money to be an entrepreneur. It's something that you don't want to what? have. So you can, can, can you if you are going to be an entrepreneur, you are looking for money or you are not looking for money? I'm looking for money. 
So then, let's go backwards and let me uh, let me ask you again. Money is a creativity motivator, yes or not? No. None. No. Okay, so if you want to be an entrepreneur, it's because you want to be, your company wants to be, you want your company to be prof profitable, okay? Yes. So, when you are thinking about this, since the beginning, you are not thinking that my company is going to be profitable. What's, what's the point of the company? So, that's why I was telling you, this is a tricky question. Now, how about for innovation? Money is a motivator for innovation, yes or not? Yes. yes. No. no. Uh, because uh, innovation uh, is an uh, idea, it's maybe your dream or wish, it's created before you thought about money, doing money with it. So after that, when you begin thinking about your idea, idea dream or wish, like about a uh, business model, maybe after that you will be thinking about uh, how to monetize this stuff. Okay. But I, I, I see your point. But Think about this. I think creativity and innovation are different Deeper. things, and uh, you use the creativity to do innovation. Exactly. Creativity is an inborn property of a person. So some person is creative or not. And uh, innovation is something you actively do. It's not inborn, but you, you do it for various purposes, and one of them can be to make money. Okay, okay. So, now let me um, answer this, uh, from an, an answer that people who knows about this think about if, if it's not a, a real motivator, money. When you are thinking at the beginning, uh, an idea, the first thing that comes to your head, remember, is comfort. How am I going to acquire comfort? One of the principal drivers to acquire comfort is money. So probably not direct, there is not a direct connection, but at a certain point, it is a motivator for creativity, and definitely for innovation, okay? Let me put you like this. It's idea, then comes an invention, and then the invention turns to innovation. Okay, now, sorry because of that. Now, we're going to see the process of uh, technology transfer from the inside uh, universities. Probably some of you that uh, you want to make companies, I will try to make a difference between what is the procedure for the university and is what is going to be the procedure for the companies, okay? First of all, we need to, be, we need to find the value strategy identification for any idea, okay? Excuse me for interrupting. I need to run a meeting. If I'm able, I'll be back. Thank you very much. I'm trying to be nice to the Stagan of the organization. I'm going to be nice to the Passive strategy, irregular uh, strategy. Okay, the first, the first step that we are going to take is going to be 
the approach and interaction between academy and uh, industry. Now remember, if you can see here, the main picture is an engine. So you will have your input, and we are going to see what is going to be the output of this uh, technology transfer. Well, I say on Pirulrix from the Gauka to the Gaspar by Mashoris to us, industry, there are academia, Tas, an engine shim, generator shit, when she gets left, Dinahot, Raris, Chadepur, Raris, Resulta, Amova Puglia, Kamua, Kadam Ideis, Kadam Shavish. Now, most of us, we can identify a need from the industry. Even if we want to buy something that you cannot find, probably you can find something that you can create to fill this void, to fill this gap in the industry. Now the question is, we can solve it, yes or no. Think about this, the whole university. As a whole university, we can solve it, we can provide the industry with that idea or element that they are lacking, yes or no. In all fields, service, agriculture, engineering, physics, all the, the whole structure of the university, how can you provide this idea to the industry? Okay? Uh, and tell, I, I, I think I didn't get it, but no. tell universities and show the Liaga, show the product, Romelitz. Now remember this license academy, we're going to see it in the part of intellectual property. So just now. See this, you have all your knowledge coming from the university. And you must to identify in the industry these main factors. Okay? Now, it's a must-have for the industry, this product or not, your idea, what you are creating, even your startup. Imagine, think about this, my startup has the possibility to succeed in the industry, yes or no? There's the market for my for, for my startup, yes or no? Outs level ya which other than war is to our bazaar training product is this war may war startup to the company of Mr. Barak, outs level which other than I get about war is bazaar that are for a mokona chamber. Now, is a need or not? Let's uh, ex put an example what is a need in the market. Do you need an iPad? Yes or no? no. You don't need an iPad to survive. Yeah. You don't need it. You need an iPhone? Yeah. This is what I call the difference between if you ask me what I need, I'm going to tell you a Ferrari. Okay? But that is not what I need. What I need is a car. Okay? Okay? <laughs> Uh, iPhone is actually the thing to show that I said, my grandma, I'm that iPhone. My grandma said to keep out of the process. 
Now, you have you, you, you have decided if it's a must-have for the industry. If there is a need, and now I have an advantage for what is out there, and I can succeed taking advantage of my advantage. If you cannot define that, not even an idea from the university, that means that you are going to get lost. Very easily. Now, where's my position in the industry? If it's a very low position, I'm going to start with a, with a startup, very small company. I will start with a medium company, or I've got a lot of money, I can go big. Okay? What is my position uh, on the market? And how much of that market I want to take? And you can measure it in percentage. Basically, if you're talking about incredible huge market as a plastics, if you get 1%, that means that you are going to get billionaire. Yes. Now, you have half of the process to identify this, this uh, idea, innovation, invention that you have. Now you have to look about this. This is the perspective university. You are going to deal with a company and you need to see the level of knowledge of that company. And this is very basic. There are three levels. The company is, has more knowledge than you, has the same level, and less level, uh, less uh, knowledge in, 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 uh, of the technology innovation. You mean industry, yes? The, the, the one that you are trying to... Exactly. Yes, yes. From the from the university standpoint, what are you going to do is that you are going to get knowledge and put it in, 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 in the industry, in a company. But what about if the company knows more than you? In that case, that means that you're, you can help the company, but you cannot provide much of the information. In the case of a startups, you need to see if the industry around you has more knowledge than you. Because that means that the other companies, they were evolved faster than you. Now, for the companies, it's a very bad situation. Very bad. You don't want to be in that position. If the other companies that were evolved faster than you, that means that you are going to be out of business very soon. Now, 
from the standpoint of the university is very good because now the company will provide you with more knowledge and you can evolve faster inside the university. So you can see that it's completely different uh, both cases. Now, in the same position, for a company, you can be competitive. You can be, I mean, you can put your, your product or service in the market and you can succeed. Very hard, but you can succeed. Now, in a lower level, for a company, is the ideal situation. Because now your company can evolve faster than the other companies. For the university, is also the best situation. Because you can provide from the beginning with the knowledge to develop the whole idea of the business to a company. So that is the, the, the ideal situation for both cases. Now, this process is both ways. You need a feedback. We are going to see that. But what happens if, okay, I need a car, you're going to give me a car, and you're going to give me a Ferrari. Now, question, do I know how to drive a Ferrari? Ninety percent of the cases, people doesn't know how to drive a Ferrari. This is what we call adopting and adapting the technology. You put certain information, invention or innovation in the industry, and the industry has to transform this something suitable for them. Intellectual property, we're going to see it. Now, innovation trends. This is what people demand, a world demand. People demand. You can see in, in, in the world. Now, uh, electronic devices, gadgets. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants that. So that is, you know that that is a trend. But also a trend is um, clean energy. Energy uh, free from uh, carbon so sources. That is a huge trend in the world. Seeing these uh, trends, you can come up, come up with an idea to put it in the industry. So you need to look at that too. Because probably you are going to create something that is outdated. No one is going to be interested in that. So look also for the trends in innovation in the world. So you know what's this trend of it? That's simply a share. That's from the technology of it. Now, you can see, look. The first step, the, free, the first three steps that I present, 
was the input. What do you need to know from the industry to take it inside the university and transform this? Okay? Now, until here, this is the input. Now, we've seen this, the feedback. This is inside the university. Innovation is two ways. You give to the industry, the industry says, we need to change some things, you take it back, you adapt this, and then go back to, to, to the industry. If it doesn't work, again, this is like a, a suit, like a tailor. You measure it until it's perfect. Now, inside the university, you need to have the correct personnel that we call it project managers to grab this idea, innovation, invention, and process the information with the professors and students and be, imagine the, trans, the, the, the translator between the academia and the industry. These persons uh, that, that is, we call it innovation centers, we're going to see this later. These innovation centers are, uh, how, how could I call it, uh, the engine inside universities to drive in a, a innovation. Okay? People who have the knowledge to translate the information, the academic information, into business. This is crucial. This is very important. Now, the other part, the industry, if we give them some technology that the people in that industry doesn't have the knowledge, they, they are not going to, to use it. It's like build a rocket to go to the moon. And you give it a certain person, but they don't know how to use it. It's exactly the same. They need to have the personnel too. And for the translation, and then I'm going to tell you what is one of the crucial points for innovation here in Georgia. Okay, so now, uh, the, the, one of the critical points for innovation in Georgia. Ah, the national we, we see something very important. Universities, they say, I don't have anything to, to provide to the industry. We don't have anything. An industry says, you know what, I don't need anything from the universities. We create a, uh, I'm sorry, first this and we create a program to insert master degrees and PhDs inside the industry. Industry were hiring master degrees and, and PhDs. And they realize that they need the academia. 
Now you can see here, this is the last part inside, inside the engine, inside the university. Now we are going to the results, to the output. This is the technology that will solve the need or the problem. It's basically called the results of research. Now, this is where the process to convert inventions to innovation starts. Now that you have a, an output out of the university or for a company, this is the moment where the industry start to start to implement this, this this knowledge. So this is right here we are talking about converting inventions in innovation. Okay. And here is when you have two teams at the beginning, industry and academia, and suddenly you have only one team. You fusion these two, these two teams. You need more feedback from both parts, and in this moment you start thinking about the business model. Which one will be your business model for the future? Our research momentary research is a academic industry of the next few years. Now, I'm sure for us, we have to make sure that we maximize the revenue we have. Now, I'm sure we have to make sure that we Now. After this, that you you know now what you have, you start making all the legal documents mm -hmm. for the appropriation of the technology. We were talking. Okay. Now, I will give you some examples. Who knows what is Gorilla Glass? You don't know what is Gorilla Glass? Okay, some people. Now, all your iPhones and iPads, when you're touching with the, the glass that they have in front, they call it Gorilla Glass. It's a trademark. Now, what happens when your idea, your invention, your innovation is incredible expensive. Do you think that industry that will be interested, even if it's the best of the best in the world? No, not so much. They will be interested or not? 
they won't be interested. It, it won't be the number one priority. Exactly. It won't be the number one priority. <laughs> That is? Uh, they say it depends on the product. Depends on the product. You're talking about inside the university, but from the industry, I'm going to tell you no. As university is put an option, the industry is put an option, our output is the opportunity to run a square. And let me tell you why. This is actually a difference between scientific approach and business approach. Yeah. Like, uh, science people always think that all the stuff they are making is absolutely something groundbreaking. And it can cost a lot of money, but it can provide any result in the near future. And also when there is no alternatives uh, for these technologies, it's not quite Let me tell you why. If I buy your technology, and if I put it in the market, you are going to buy a phone that is going to cost $10,000? Definitely no. So your company is going to back rapidly immediately. Here, this is one of the best examples. Everybody, all a lot, I mean, computers, laptops, tablets, uh, uh, phones, every single device use glass. So you have around two billion devices in the world. Well, Okay, you have a huge market and you have a technology that only costs 2% more than the traditional one. What the company will say? That is the best example that we have. And everybody, I mean, a lot of people who are touching this technology right now. It's a hundred times better than the standard glass, but only costs 2% more than the standard. This is this is basic. This is business. Now we are talking about business. But remember, you have the knowledge, and I will put you an example also in biotech. That it, this was a, a, my experience. Everything can and will be upgraded. Always, all the time. Think about this. Now, what we can do to upgrade something? Think about this. Okay? Now, this is very important to for English. Okay? Don't worry to share your ideas. If somebody, if somebody starts stealing your ideas, that means that your ideas are very good. If they don't steal your ideas, that means that they are very bad. But, but we are going to see how to protect your ideas for different uh, point of views. Um, 
Now, we're, most of the examples, they are related to engineering or tech, something related to IT. But now, in biotech, uh, in my experience, and we try to invent this term, that is the minimum maximum effect. Okay? You have a vaccine, and how much is going to be the doses of this vaccine for humans? Uh, you're going to measure it in nano, nano uh, nanograms? You're going to measure it in milligrams? How you're going to measure it? Probably you can, you can, the, your doses can be measured in nanograms, but you are uh, providing milligrams in each doses of the vaccine. Now, from inside the, the, the university, you might think, probably this is the right doses, and I'm going to give a percentage of the doses to cover better, to make it better. But the industry is going to tell you, wait. So you are telling me that you are wasting? And now let's go back to the 2%. Set your, your base on a 2%, and from there, start calculating your minimum, maximum effect. I uh, get now, we are going to see the intellectual property world. Intellectual property rights, you will see, is only the peak of the iceberg. Do you know this analogy? Exactly. Exactly. The peak of the iceberg is only 10% about what is under the water. Uh, intellectual intellectual you can see, you are sitting, you are like that penguin with intellectual property. You are in the peak of the iceberg. That is intellectual property rights. But now, under the water, that is the real intellectual property that is started, which is called the managing of intellectual property rights. Always, you are going to share okay, your idea, your invention, your innovation, but always try to keep it as a trade secret. 
Let me ask, let me tell you very quickly the difference. You're going to share with someone one idea. And even if you, if you don't have the confidence with this person, you can tell them, you know what, this is going to be secret. At that moment, you're making a contract, a verbal contract with that person. If he or she make this information public, she is violating, she's breaching the contract, the secrecy contract. But how can you prove it? Mostly, uh, I mean, you have witnesses. I think there are examples of proving this. You have witnesses, you have text messages, you have uh, emails, uh, a lot of this. Uh, now, what to patent and when to patent, it will be a matter of each and every single invention or image. This is not, not like something very strict that we're talking. Some cases, you don't have to patent immediately because you need to time to develop the idea and the invention. If you patent immediately, you have one year to fight it for PCT, which is the patent around the world, mm -hmm. and that is going to cost you in biotech is around $250,000. Engineering, I'm sorry, we're, we're talking about $180,000. So sorry. Excuse me? How much does the IP cost? To register? $250,000. To cover the 70% of the market in the world. Globally. Now, let me ask you, do you think that normally universities can support that amount of money? Exactly. uh, about what? I'm sorry? Uh, about the provision of patent. It's, uh, if you just register the idea, but uh, don't patent it, but just uh, apply for the patent or something like that. And then you have one year before actually getting the real patent. No, before they publish the patent. After they publish the patent, I mean, you always, you can drop the patent. But, I mean, it's going to cost you money. But if you do it before they publish the, the patent, you have two advantages. First of all, won't, um, um, I forgot the word, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not going to create a priority on your invention. Yes, After they publish it, which is around eight months to one year, if they publish it, automatically you cannot file for that patent again. So, it's a little bit tricky. It's a little bit tricky. Otherwise, if you let the patent go, you start filing patents, probably you are going to have 20 patents in your university. And everybody's going to be happy. We have a lot of patents. And suddenly, in the administration, 
there is a form that it, they need to pay for the maintenance of the IP. And the happiness is start to get a little bit uh, fussy. Mm -hmm. May I ask a question? Yes. So does it mean that if you don't have a licensee, uh, a company who is interested in your patent, it doesn't make sense to apply for the patent? Uh, this is this is how we uh, conceive this work. You can have a very good academic uh, idea, invention, and you can file for it because it's a very good academic. But mostly patents are made for commercial. Yeah, I'm asking about commercial ones. Um, in my case, I will say no. Exactly. Okay. Now to point of view, U.S. for every eleven thousand patents, one makes money because they patent everything. Mm -hmm. What? Eleven thousand, just one makes money. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, but the patents uh, make so much money that it's good for the actually. They, they are just uh, trying to patent everything because even this one out of 11,000 makes a lot yeah. of money. Or just to protect your own property, like Apple. Yeah. Then you have patent trolls that uh, I'm going to be. Yeah, patent trolls. Yeah. Patent trolls, there are companies that steal that. I mean, they pay you to get your license and then they don't do anything with that, with, with that uh, technology. I've got a question, maybe a civil license because I'm not really an uh, expert uh, in the film, but if one gets a patent and then after one or two years it comes out that it's not a commercialized uh, invention, can one cancel the patent? Because one has to pay maintenance fee, right? Yes. So it yes. is possible to cancel the patent. Yes, but you already spend... That's, it, that's clear, yeah. You already spend some money yeah, for filing the patent and so on and so on. But like, you can cancel it, it's Drop it, yes. Of course. Which is, for some people, doesn't make sense because you already spend yeah, $30,000 and then drop it. But yes, in any, in any moment, you can drop the, the money. Okay, I'm sorry, probably I confused. <laughs> But let, let the, the next idea. No, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell it. Okay, okay. Is it again? Well, it's about to find out the target trade or it's about to patent the university too. And now it's about to be done. Okay, I can't get it. It's about to be done. I'll go check it. I'm not going to check it. I'm going to check the university too. I'm going to check the patent. 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 I'm going to now to whom belong the intellectual property. When, for example, um, so most of the countries, when professors and, a, and the students, they create something inside the university, the intellectual property belongs to the university. Yes. Not to the students or the professors. Okay, that is very important. But uh, so if, if they do this outside of the 
Wow, that's a problem start. <laughs> because it's, if it's a line of a, uh, research inside the university, that means that yeah, you can yeah, do yeah. it outside, but yeah. it's going to be a little bit tricky to... It's something that you can do on your free time outside yeah. the, the university. Perfect. But there, there should be a policy about it. Yeah, I there mean, is a policy. If it's research done in the university, then the university takes at least part sure. of it. Like we have our contract with the university 50-50 Yes. And that is another part. If it's in your labor contract says, automatically it's yes, going to be like that. Uh, the, in a lot of companies, you can make something and it will be 90% it will be taken by the company. Because in all the contracts they write that all this produced during the period, uh, it's like there. What they're going to tell you, that's why I'm paying you. Yes, that's why I'm paying you. It doesn't matter what time you were doing it. And nobody <coughs> can check what time you were doing this stuff. But if, but there are some, uh, I don't know, shoes laws and stuff like that, but uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. Now, who is going to pay for, for the intellectual property and who is going to be in charge of the, of the intellectual property? Inside the universities, to this innovation center that we were talking about, we call it empowered. Because all the intellectual property is going to be managed by this center, this innovation center. And they will have the power to license it to make at our, um, the right of assignments whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, in most of the cases, yes. Most of the cases. Okay, now, I'm going to go through this um, a little bit faster because I want you, I want to spend a little bit more time on the business model part. Now, always, we're going to, to see that with, with the university, the intellectual property do due diligence formats for all the inventions, innovations, everything. Always search before initiate a project, not to remake or make again the, the, something that is done. Very important. All the researchers first go, go through this process faster. Uh, not to spend unnecessary time, effort, and money, but we're seeing that this part. And always, when you have all these results, try to redirect your research to something that can be valuable for the industry. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Now, all time of legal uh, of legal instruments that connect the property or the transmissions of these rights, licensing, tech transfer, assignment of rights. You always has to have one of these legal instruments, okay? This is what I call license academy. Why academy? Because you're, you're going to gather your tech transfer team, your um, um, academic committee, I don't know how do you call it here, okay? You're going to gather all these people and they're going to tell you know what, we're going to license this to the industry. It's very important that everybody has the same shared uh, background of obviousness. Okay. 
business of English players. Okay, now follow and enforce me. Always make sure that the agreements are fulfilled and you can set the per periodical meetings with the industry that you are given the, the, the assignment or the tech transfer. <laughs> Okay. In this part, I think that is going to be very interesting for you, and I think that is going to be it is very important because it's how to create a business model. Okay. How to take? You have an idea. We saw all this process. How to take my idea to the market? How to pick my business model? And how to create my business model? I need a business plan or I don't need a business plan? Do you know the difference between business model? And business plan? Yes, actually I think uh, business model is the way how you imagine your product will be sold. Okay. And business plan, it's actually step by step instruction or how to do it on all the steps, uh, how, how to sell it. Or all, all the steps for selling the product. Okay. We, are, we are going to see this, this process and I hope that this will be more clear for you. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 I'm how an organization creates, delivers, and captures value. So it's not only how my product is going to be sold, but it's the whole idea of the business. Business model is a business idea. It's a business model. It's a business model. It's a business model. It's a business model. a business model. It's a business model. It's a business model. Okay. Now, this is part of the business model. Assessments of trends with different innovation, aggregation levels, micro consumer, industry technology, and the relevance for the for the current solution of the business. Okay? You have a product. You have you're going to sell a mouse. But the difference will be how you put it in the market. Okay, I will give you some examples about this. Now this includes purpose, uh, include the purpose, the business process, the target customers, offerings, strategies, infrastructure, organizational structure, Trading practices and operational process and policies. How much you said? I'll translate. Yeah. How much you said this? National about business business process. A be target. Number two. Number. Some is no. What was the belly? What was the belly? Strategy. A be infrastructure. Organizational structure. Now, how to build my business model? First, we're going to see another, uh, some examples, so we'll make it more clear to you. And then, let's create a fake company here, and let's make a business model. What do you think? Okay. Okay. One of the most famous 
is the Gillette business model. Okay? You know what is Gillette, isn't it? No? The shaving no. machine. I don't know. Early, I mean, you know now. I don't know it. <laughs> okay, you will know now. <laughs> okay, before, obviously, I mean, it was not even my time. They, they didn't solve the device, okay? If you purchase or buy the blades, they will give you that device. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But if that means that you need to go back to buy more blades. Okay? The business was not in the device, it was in the blades. What you you think that their thoughts were that the place were the business? Because you can sell more blades than these devices. It's like the same in phone contracts. Like to sell the phones, for example, to give phones for a very cheap price, and services, they are consumable. So the blades are consumable, and you can sell a lot of them, and the devices. Someone that copy exact in, in, in when you're talking about mobiles and the, these companies, some of them they create their own business model. Mm -hmm. but let me put you one example that is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. These um, devices that you put in, in the electricity and um, with a smell. Yeah, air fresher. Air freshers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You go and they're going to tell you. You buy the air fresher and the device is free. Mm -hmm. And it says in the box. Mm -hmm. You buy the device, but you need to come back and continue buying the um, um, rechargeables. Yes, exactly. Uh, Robert, exactly the same. Now. Now, someone has one even the smallest idea how is the business model for Apple? Apple. Everybody knows Apple. You, over there, they they you know Apple. You know Apple. You know Apple. Have you ever thought why they are so successful? Because they have dictatorship. Because they have dictatorship. <laughs> Hipsters love them. Hipsters. Yes, that's the point. No. Design. First of all, is the sign. The other is that they they sell you a concept. You know how much cost Apple to produce one iPhone? It's even cheaper than for Samsung. Yes. But they sell you a status. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many um, 
Apple stores have you seen in your life? If you see more than five, I will give you 50 Larry right now. I have. <laughs> <laughs> don't lie to me. No, I'm serious. None of them. No, I don't, I don't. No, 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 no. Real, no, no. real. Yeah, real ones. Real ones. A lucky one. We have no legal. <laughs> okay, two people. None of them. They're incredible hard to find because they sold you a status. Mm -hmm. And they don't produce their phones. Samsung builds more than half of the companies for one iPhone 6. What they sell is the image. That is their business model. I know, it's quite probably that they have business models. This is the idea on uh, brand, the brands with the uh, different products. Uh, I get the target design. It's uh, around the same idea as we got. Um, Apple's magazine, the iPhone check now, but you have to use the bar uh, with the Samsung. Tunta is in your product idea, my syndrome is in your idea, and I have to do products. 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 Okay. Domino's Pizza. Yeah. You know what is Domino's um, Pizza? Yes. No? It's a pizza shop. They don't have the best pizzas in the world. They're very expensive. But they sell you the idea of fast food. If you order a pizza, the pizza is going to take one hour to reach your home. Isn't it? Domino's Pizza says, if the pizza doesn't get to your house, Less than 30 minutes is free. Mm -hmm. Everybody's calling pizza. I have a pizza. I have a pizza. I have a pizza. I uh, not the They were the ones, I mean, one of the first ones that they start using the bikes to deliver pizzas. So they're fast. The pizza, when it arrives to your home, is still hot. You're very hungry. You don't care. The only thing that you want is a pizza right now. Wow. Incredible business model. Very good. How then you see the kind of the that you said is from me that it's a bit tension that we said to us. The road is a sad and then you share the voice has been from the Philly or Brother Pitot's head. That's what I'm said. It's a head down, it's at the jump. Now, Microsoft. A lot of people, when you're talking about Microsoft and their business model, it's very tricky. Okay? In, at the beginning, what Microsoft, Microsoft says, you know what, I want to be the king. I don't, want, I don't want to have competitors. I will have a monopoly even if in the world they punish me because of that. They find me. I don't care. I'm the only one. He got an agreement with all the marks, I mean trademarks in computer. So when you're buying a laptop, a computer, everything was pre-installed, the windows and the office. Uh, Microsoft, so that is what the Microsoft is business models, for them to go around the industry, my that is what we come back, or people met there, or people people were invited there, my side interested that. Well, that was his first <coughs> business model, and it worked very good, very good. But suddenly. 
suddenly, he got sued. He lost the legal battle. Now, if you go and buy a computer, is without Windows, without Office, and you need to buy it now. Thanks to my friend Bill Gates, now everything is more expensive. Mm -hmm. Now, as you call Microsoft to me, I'm trying to be a spider spa, I'm a bishop, Microsoft. Microsoft Windows computers. Now you lose. Now what, what are you going to do? What is your next step? What is your next business model? Now they were saying, okay, you're going to buy me a license for a hundred dollars and you're going to have it forever. Don't worry, I will eat. Even I will give you all the upgrades, everything, don't worry. Until a couple of months, Microsoft says, no, I'm losing money. So I will give you the license for one year. And you, every single year, you're going to pay me. If you want to have my uh, um, software. And now it's even more expensive. Now, you know what is Alibaba? Yeah, Most of you. You know that it's the company that reached the billion, one of the fastest companies in the world to reach the, bil the billion of value of the company. You know Amazon, isn't it? Yes. And the difference, what Alibaba says, you know what? eBay, Amazon, every single website that to make these kind of trades, they make it for one, two, or very small scales. And Alibaba was think big. Is the same approach of business, but with a different business model. But do you know about Samitrace? Excuse me. Do you know about Samitrace website? Yeah, like it's. Alibaba, but this website is more successful than another three because there is cheaper and the production is more better than you can find in Amazon or Bay or also in Alibaba. And, and this one is more famous in Asia, and Alibaba is in, in the world. And that is basically mm -hmm. the difference. Alibaba is also Asian, right? Uh, no, it was from uh, Asian guys but built in San Francisco. And they start in Asia because, I mean, probably right now, 60% of the trades in the world is, is in Asia. Is it? Alibaba and Varish Asset Company are the most popular company in the world. I don't understand that Amazon is the best company in the world. I don't understand that Amazon is the best company in the world. I don't understand that it's a now, IBM is Xerox. I mean, you know Xerox, mm -hmm. isn't it? Even, you know what, what a term is vulgarized? You know what that means? Yes. You know? The rest? The no? name of the company is the same as the... When you are going to take a photocopy, you say a Xerox. Yes. yes. When you are going to search for something, what do you say? Google. Going to Google it. Exactly. Actually, it was added to the vocabularies, like the English language vocabularies, exactly. as a word, standalone words. But you know, Google doesn't want that, and no one wants that. Why? Because it affects your trademark. Mm. Okay? Uh, 
for example, in our case in, in, in Mexico, we say Kleenex, I don't know if you have this, Kleenex at uh, tissue paper, mm -hmm. paper tissue. We call it Nova. Okay. Or uh, Give me a, so you said vulgarizing these this terms. Xerox was one of the first companies to invest in innovation in the world. Okay? They create innovation. They were making innovation. And they even uh, made computers, a lot of uh, um, devices. But they came up with this idea. And they were selling the, the, the machines. They saw one problem. No one was buying it. But they were very expensive. And then they changed the business model. I'm going to rent you for an amount of money, the, the machine. And the shape also, it will be and Exactly, exactly. They, they change it. The, the point of view, the, the business model. And there they were, give me a thousand dollars and you can have a thousand pounds. <laughs> We have uh, seven minutes, okay. ten minutes, and five minutes more. And suddenly they changed it again, and they were like, you know what, don't pay me a rent. Don't pay me a rent. Every single copy that you, that you make, you're going to give me one cent. So, even uh, the psychology of the people that they're having the machine, we're like, we're not paying rent. Make all the copies that you want immediately. And they make more money. Now the last one, IBM. Uh, I'm going to tell you. Tell okay. Shandak business model. I'm going to well, in IBM, you know at the beginning, uh, Microsoft and Apple, they were looking up to IBM. Mm -hmm. Steve Jobs was working. Mm -hmm. It was the monster. It was the innovation of the innovation idea. And because they stick with the same business model or making the same computer, the same shape, year after year, they were dead. Now, they are producing for the other brands. And did you know that the brand Lenovo is from IBM? Yes. Yeah. Think that. <laughs> You had a team, Sarah, Steve Jobs, the Ram Rawls, 
ცნობილი ადამიანი, რომელმაც ტექნოლოგიური რაღაცები გააკეთა, მუშაობდა IBM ში. ასევე თვითით კომპანია Lenovo. Lenovo IBM იყო და Lenovo მისი და IBM-ის კომპიუტერები და დღეს IBM მაგივრად ის მუშაობს ბატონო. Well, I think that's it. We don't have time to make this uh, um, exercise about the creating the. It is, we can do it uh, next. Either next time, or you can send it on your our email address. You can show, and it will be easy then when come next time. I think it's better here yes. because yes. all they will start interacting with every single one, yeah, and we are going to build it. Here. So for the next time, we're going to take. 10 15 minutes and we're going to build this this business model what do you think yes, yes. well thank you very much for coming back and if you have any doubts any questions